Good morning, everyone. Hello, come on in. We're going to get started. And sorry, I was just a few minutes late. I was working on the sound and getting everything set up. I hope everybody's doing great today. I am um, trying to do this live in between two uh, weather systems coming through. First was earlier this morning. And then Jackie just came in and said, I'm going to go, go ahead and go fishing because we're getting some more weather about noon and when he says weather it usually means thunderstorms so hey parson thank you y'all come on in and say hello and we're going to be making a fun fold card today that was inspired by one of my team members one of my stars and i wanted to recreate it because i loved it and it's like two cards in one i think you're going to like it so we're going to be using the dandy garden uh, stamp set Good morning, Pam. Hi, Lynn. Yeah, it's good to see you all too. I'm so glad to be here. It's like, I wish I had music in the background, you know, <laughs> it's like a party. So anyway, come on in and we're going to get started. I um, just want to talk a little bit about the, before we get started, the uh, last chance list. The best way to see what is still available is just to visit my online store link. And if it's there, it's available to order, okay? Um, there are some items on that list, and I think I mentioned this uh, last week when I was going through the catalog, but um, it, the bundles might not be bundled in the new catalog, but some, one or both of the items may be available, okay? Um, but check that out carefully because some of those items the stamp set may be retiring, but the die or the punch is not. Okay. Good morning, Carol. Thank you for sharing. Okay. All right. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and go down to the downward camera and we're going to, um, I'm going to show you what I'm sending uh, the winner of the random drawing for sharing uh, for the Easter video when I did the little basket. So let me get back over here. There we go. All right. Hi, Jerry. Yes, it's so good to see you all. Hope everybody's doing great. Um, okay, so when I did the Easter basket and Easter card video, that was, I think, March 17th, um, I did a drawing and Melinda Guy shared my video and she is getting these two cards uh, that I made with the circle celebration set. Okay. All right. So Melinda, I'll be sending those to you. And so now let's get going. I'm going to show you how to cut the base for the cardstock for this particular one, because, uh, you know, we're so used to cutting five and a half by eight and a half or four and a quarter by 11 that I speak from experience. I don't want you to cut it wrong to start with, okay? So the base of this card, of the one of the cards in this little fun fold two and one, uh, it's cut 10 by five and a half. So, you know, you see that five and a half and you wanna turn it and cut five and a half, but oh no. This is just eight and a half inches wide, okay? So we need to cut the 11 inches down to 10, which is this long side. Okay, so we need to cut one inch off. So let me just slip that in there and do this. And then you'll be ready to go. So consequently, you will only get one card base out of one eight and a half by 11 card stock. Hey, Kathy. So I could cut an inch off. Okay, so now it's 10 inches. All right. Let me get my light situated here. A little bit better anyway seems to be a glare but we're gonna try to fix that there we go all right so now we want to that's 10 inches so now we want to cut this five and one half this way okay so don't see that five and a half and just want to chop it in half okay do it like this and now you have five and a half and let me double check that because this morning I cut my first one at five and a quarter by 10. Okay, so now let's do some scoring. 
I'm going to put this. This is Blackberry Bliss, by the way. I'm using the Dandy Garden 6x6 six six Designer Series paper. And let's see. Get my simple scored over here. And we're going to do some simple scoring. It's not a difficult card or a difficult fold, but there are lots of uh, pieces. And um, there's an order to do things in. And I'll show you you'll understand what I mean by that in just a few minutes. Okay, so there's my 10 by five and a half, and I'm going to score it at four and one quarter and eight and one half. Okay, now I'm gonna move the scoring tool out of the way. And then I'm just going to fold this over and fold this over like this, okay? So that's one of the, the fun folds. It's different. And I know it looks a lot like some we've done before. But, you know, that's what's great about card design is that you can take the same recipe, so to speak, and every time you recreate it using different papers or stamp sets or add a little bit to it, it's totally different. Okay? So I've had a lot of... Um, people inquire lately about choosing designer papers to go with a project. And I'll have to say with mine, uh, I usually take my cues from the designer paper. Okay. And that's what I've done today because I've used quite a few of the colors that are in this Dandy Garden paper. All right. So now I have that done. I'm going to go ahead and work on this part of the card. So I have two strips of the dandy garden and I use the same paper. This is, these are cut at one and a quarter by five and a quarter. And uh, as usual, I will have all the details up by tomorrow on the blog and I'll provide a link here to access that. And so that's, what did I say? One and a quarter by five and a quarter. And I'm going to put one here on this outside flap. So let me go ahead. And I'm using the um, Seal Plus today on this. I've seemed to have good luck with the sample. Okay, so see, here's this Mossy Meadow print with the great um, Blackberry Bliss. And normally I think, oh, you know, how does that go? Well, the designer paper combined these, so I trust the Stampin' Up! artists that put all of these uh, papers together. And then I'm going to take this one, which has Bumblebee, okay, another one of the colors in that designer paper stack. And I'm just going to put that on the inside of that flap. Okay. Just like that. Okay. So now we've got those ready and it's going to overlap like that. Now I want to put my, what I call my highlight for my designer paper here. And I chose, um, wanted to really use the uh, dragonflies. Okay. And so I cut this one with a smaller print with the dragonflies and the dandelions. Okay. And that is cut four by five and a quarter. And I'm going to put that over top of this. Now, Speaking of dragonflies, how many of you called those or call those mosquito hawks? <laughs> I know when I was little, uh, many years ago, mom had a clothesline in the backyard. Remember hanging out clothes and sheets? I wish most of the time, I wish I still had one. But um, I, in fact, I told Jackie, I wanted a retractable one on the porch because I hang a lot of my clothes out. Anyway, that was a lame swerve, but let's get back to this, the dragonflies. We called these mosquito hawks. They used to land on the um, clothesline and I'd go behind them and I'd get their wings, which I know is probably kind of cruel now that I think of it, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't hurt them. I'd just see if I could catch them and then I'd let them go but we called them mosquito hawks. And I was just wondering if anybody else called them that. Now I call them dragonflies all the time. And that's what I'm teaching um, 
Mia and Lila and Clara, you know, I, I, when I refer to them, I say dragonfly because mos mosquito hawk sounds kind of, whew. you still have a clothesline parson. All right. Good morning, Diane. Good morning, Linda. Um, so anyway, yeah, mosquito hawk, because my mom would say they ate the mosquitoes. Okay. Okay. So now we've got this going. Okay. See how that's all coming together. We've got the Blackberry Bliss in here. We've got the Mossy Meadow on the inside. We have the Bumblebee with the uh, dandelions. The um, Bumblebee, the name of this in color, I always want, you know how most of our colors are uh, two words and this one is just one? That really throws me off. <laughs> yeah, Kathy, Mosquito Hawk. Yep. I thought so. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the inside of the card here. If you wanted to really make it, uh, you know, use more designer paper, you could also put another piece here. But I decided I didn't want to take away from where I write the message. Okay. So I'm taking a piece of basic white. And I'm going to stamp a sentiment from here. And it's um, this one I'm using on the inside says, you are an inspiration. I love that one because of my business name is Ink and Inspirations. <laughs> so, okay, let me stamp, ink this up in Blackberry Bliss. And then I'm just going to stamp it in the middle. Pretty good. All right. Now I'm going to take Bumblebee and these little mosquito hawks slash dragonflies. Parson, do you hang all of your clothes out on your clothesline? Just curious. I know uh, my mom used to do sheets a lot, put our sheets out there, and they'd just be flapping in the wind. I remember that. And I also remember running through them and that not being very popular with my mom. <laughs> you know, clean clothes and <laughs> running through them. It was fun, though, you know, and we would hide between the sheets. That didn't sound right, but you know what I mean. <laughs> hide between the hanging sheets on the, um, on the clothesline when we were playing hide and seek. Okay, so that's going to go on the inside. Okay, let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and put that in. I told you it was a process. We're almost completing this first card. And if you'd like, here's your first card of the two in one. You could, you know, use make a closure and put your sentiment on the outside and you could be done like this. Yes, Lynn. You like to hang the sheets out. Yeah. Um, uh, for those of you that can't see the comments, if you're watching this later, we're talking about clotheslines and hanging the sheets out and that fresh smell they had and how I used to catch the mosquito hawks slash dragonflies on the clothesline. And uh, people are commenting about clotheslines and dragonflies and mosquito hawks. So, okay, there we go with that. So now let's start part two, which is the second part of the card, or actually the second card. So I have a three and a half by seven piece of basic white. And I'm going to score this, and I'm just going to use my trimmer for this, at three and a half in half, in half at three and one half. So be sure you get the light gray if you're using your trimmer to score. Score, score that down. Okay. And then I have several pieces over here I'm using of designer paper. Here is the dandelions and the Blackberry Bliss. Here is a bumblebee print. Okay. Now I'm going to fold this in half. And of course, match those corners, then give it a good crease with your bone folder. All right. So then, I put, this is going to go over top here, but you don't want to do that yet. I'm just showing you where the designer papers are going. And then this card is going to open up 
left to right instead of right to left. Okay, so it's going to open backwards what we used to. Yes, I agree, Linda. Okay, so on the inside, we can go ahead and finish this. <clears throat> I have this bumblebee print. And I'm using some Stampin' Seal Plus. And I'm just going to put that, this is the card inside. Okay, remember it's just kind of backwards than how we usually open up our cards. All right, then we're going to have a sentiment on the inside of this one as well. And I have a piece of basic white cut at one and one half by three and one quarter to go across. Oh, and by the way, these designer paper pieces for this little card are three and a quarter inch square. Okay. All right, so let's put this here. And we're going to stamp first. So let me find my thank you for your kindness stamp. I love the fonts in this particular set because it has, it mixes script with manuscript. And it's a really pretty script. I'll show you again on this one. I'm lining that up on my grid sheet, inking this up with Blackberry Bliss, and then I'm just going to stamp in the center. Okay, see that beautiful script and then the manuscript? I love that. So pretty. Okay, let me go ahead and put this in here. When I was thinking about um, what I was going to do for our live project today, I couldn't decide on doing a set that I love that's retiring or this one. And I really hadn't played a lot with this one yet. And so I wanted to, to work with this. So I hope you enjoy it and we'll give this a try. And remember, you can use any stamp set and paper and recreate this double two-in-one card. Okay, so there's thank you for your kindness. Okay, going across there. All right. So now I am going to add a little bit of fun. These ladybug trinkets that are so cute with this set. Okay, and I'm going to put one right here. And these, the glue dots, mini glue dots work great for this. And whenever I'm working on a project, I go ahead and just stick them on the roll so I don't lose them or, you know, it's already good and the glue dot is good and stuck. Okay, so this one I'm going to put right up here. Isn't that fun? Okay. All right, so next what we're going to do is we're going to take the, the main, the other card, that we made and we're going to attach our little card okay so let me do this you're going to line the edge the folded edge of the basic white card up with the folded edge of this front blackberry bliss okay and so i'm just eyeballing there so i know where to put my adhesive so i'm just going to come down with some strips of this adhesive to hold this little three and a half inch square card on onto the front of the base. So let's see, I've got to get on my tiptoes and try to line that up. That's close. All right. So now we have that. Okay. So now we're going to work with building up this. Okay. This is going to go on the front here, but we want to do all of our embellishment on that first. It's just the easiest way to do it. And for this particular project, I decided to punch my dragonfly slash mosquito hawk out. And I'm using this bumblebee one. Great little punch here. Um, I think my sister is trying to FaceTime me, so I'll just, all right, 
I'm going to slide this in and punch. Okay, so I noticed it punched out this one too. It's not perfect, but it's it's good. Okay, so this particular sheet and several, but this one is great for punching out using the coordinating dragonfly punch for this particular project. Okay, so I've got that. And then I have another, I've already stamped this sentiment, and I decided to use Mossy Meadow to stamp this one, to just kind of tie it all in. And so this little piece that says, for a true friend, is cut at one and a half by three quarters of an inch, okay? And so I'm just going to take that and adhere that to the front of my designer paper here. And when you think about it like this, now you could make this card as a standalone too, this little square card. But I think if I was making it, I would flip it and have it open the book open way, you know. All right, so now let me see. I want to pop this little guy up on dimensionals, I think. So let me find those that are somewhere here on the desk. Uh, let's just grab another another sheet of these and I'm going to use some of these behind the wings. I like this uh, spring time sweet spring summer because it's to me it's very different with the dragonflies and the um, dandelions the wildflowers and I love I'll show you my favorite image in this set okay see how cute that looks popped up like that looks like he's gonna fly away okay so now I'm gonna take another ladybug trinket and I thought she would look good right here okay so now you think okay we can go ahead and glue that on not yet We've got to make a closure because there's a lot going on on this two-in-one card. Okay, here's a card and here's a card. So special. All right. That's going to go there, but I want to use some of the coordinating twine. This braided linen trim, I should call it. And I am cutting about 18 inches. Okay, so my grid sheet is 16 from one end to the other. Okay, and then I'm going to add a couple of inches just so I have enough to wrap around and tie. So what you're going to do now is take the linen trim in Mossy Meadow and you want to wrap it around where the closure is going to be on this left hand side. Okay, and so let me get those about even. And then what I like to do here is put a little adhesive down to hold that in place so I don't get frustrated with my linen trim before I get the other piece on, okay? So now, pull that taut. I'm gonna hold that here and, you know, and this is going to go over top. Isn't that pretty? Look at all those colors together. I mean, in, this is quite a few different colors, and normally I would recommend three, maybe four colors, but with this one, there's just so much, and it's so rich in color, and so, um, I don't know, the word isn't appropriate, but it's like, it does, it coordinates, and so it looks great. Now, I realize everyone has their different style and what they like, but for this particular project, I'm loving all mixing all these colors where I usually will follow the more simple route with not too many. Okay, so there, look. Ah, and then this is going to tie on this end. I'm not going to tie it yet, too tight. Okay, and then you can mail it. Now this card, because it has some dimension, you see that? has some dimension, it would need extra postage because it won't go through the machine. Let me show you what my friend 
at the post office, and you may know about these, but normally I have to do a first class stamp and then a, um, an extra ounce, an additional ounce stamp for something that either weighs two ounces or is what they call non-machinable. So she's, I, was, I said, okay, I need some non-machinable stamps. She goes, we have two ounce stamps. I said, you do? She goes, yeah, you don't have to use two, you know, where the, because they don't usually match or they're, you know, they're flags or something, red, white, and blue. She says, they're pretty, it's flowers, because she knows I'm always in there mailing something, cards and things. And so these are two ounce stamps and it goes for non-machinable or if your card weighs more than an ounce, okay, which sometimes it does. Okay, but anyway, I thought those were cute or pretty, I should say, and they're going to do the job when I have to mail cards with lots of layers and embellishments. Okay, so let's just take a look at this as how it would be when it's untied. Open. Thank you for your kindness. Okay, and you could write here if you wanted to. Oh, absolutely. And then it opens up like this. So. Isn't that a fun card? Do you like it? Okay, who's going to make this card? I want to know who's going to make it. And probably some of you, I mean, it's nothing new, um, but I had not ever made one before. And when my team member sent one, I believe it was a swap. Oh, great, Lynn. Yeah. See, I didn't even know they had them. It was the first time she told me about it. But a lot of times I will order my stamps online and I just didn't notice those. Yeah, that works with those little calendars for sure. Okay, so isn't that cute? It's busy, but I like it. What you think? Yeah, Pam, they work great. Okay. All right, that looks good. Okay, so it is 1031. I did great. This is, I wanted to try to switch it up a little bit and maybe not do two projects and just take my time on the one. And I kind of like that, and I hope you do too. Um, and it may enable me to do spontaneous lives where I go live just sharing or sharing cards that I receive in the mail, or, you know, talking to you for a bit. And um, so anyway, I'm just, I'm just experimenting, but trying to keep my Wednesday mornings at 10. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad y'all like it. Um, so anyway, uh, just a little bit. Let me get me back on here, I guess. Oh, let me share. Okay, so um, if you're on my email list, and if you're not, you should be because you miss a lot of stuff because there are certain projects that I send just to my email list. I send an email once a week, sometimes more if there's something I really need for you to know, okay? And so what I mentioned there yesterday is that we are, have some trips planned in April and May. So during those trip times, I won't be going live, but I will still be posting here and on my blog at inkandinspirations.com. So be sure you visit, okay? So you keep up with everything. Um, I'll tell you a little bit in the trip. And Lynn, you should be getting that soon. Mailed that yesterday, okay? Um, Kristen and John and Mia, that's our oldest daughter's family, and Jackie and I are going on a road trip to Southern Utah and visiting those national parks in there. We're going to Zion, Capitol Reef, Canyonlands, Arches, and Bryce, and then um, Mesa Verde. And at Mesa Verde, we're going to see that, but we have Mia and we have Honey who can't do everything strenuous. So, <laughs> um, we are going to do the train 
The Durango train is not running yet, not till May, but there's another one that starts a little farther north. If any of you have ever ridden that train to, from Durango to Silverton, we'll still see the scenic route and all that. And we are so excited. Never been that way, super excited. So you'll be seeing pictures of that, I'm sure. And then we'll be back and, you know, we'll go to Texas and leave from there. We'll be back and, um, then in about 10 days after that um, is our my Stampin' Up! incentive trip to Maui. And oh, we're so excited about that too. So anyway, I will be um, sharing some information on that before we leave about maybe some kind of a special or something. So be on the lookout for that. And um, anyway, two trips pretty close together two and a half to three weeks so it's like i'm working like overtime trying to get things ready for you guys so you don't miss anything and you're just seeing everything i have to share okay so thank you so much okay i'm gonna let you go uh jackie will be back in a minute and we'll have lunch and then i'm gonna do some more crafting today so i hope you had a a uh, wonderful morning here with on craft and chat with me and thanks for tuning in. Thank you if you watch the replay and I'll see you all again soon. Take care. Bye.